what is going on here. New Year, New Rovers! Right, hello everyone and welcome to this new video on my channel. So, first of all, Happy New Year. Hope you all have a fantastic 2024. So, today is New Year's Day, of course, the 1st of January 2024. Nearly got it wrong. <laughs> and today we've got game number 56 of the 23-24 season on the channel. We're back at the Eco Power Stadium. Once again, watch my team, Doncaster Rovers, as they take on MK Dons in League 2. So in today's video, I've got my thoughts pre-half-time and post-match as well as the match day vlog itself. So without further ado, for the first time this year, let's get into the video. Alright, here we are, a bit earlier than usual here, so might see if we can get some NK Don fans and some Rovers fans on here, so let's see how the day goes. Right, we've got a few um, MK fans here, so do you want to introduce yourself? So I'm Ryan, and I also run a YouTube channel called The MK Fellas. Oh, lovely. Uh, Jordan, been a season ticket holder for years and years and years, to my series. <laughs> I'm Aidan, I'm the um, SLO for MK Dons, and been a fan since we were Wimbledon. So oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, it's been a been a bit of a mixed season for you guys. Um, obviously, started pretty well, had a bit of a rough spell in the middle, and then looks like you're picking up a bit now. Um, what's your thoughts on the season so far? So it started off well because we, in the summer we got Alex Gilby back and we, um, we lost a few decent players as well with Tenai Watson, Joshua Ketra um, and, and we've also sacked Mar Jackson and we brought in Graham Alexander and everyone thought that he'll be the one to get us up, back up. He and obviously it turned out not to be true because he went a month unbeaten and then two months we lost every game, a few draws here and there and then a despicable 2 0, and then we lose drawing 2 2 to Barrow, and that's Graham gone. And then about a week later, we get Mark Williamson, who has just turned everything around. I think he's only lost one game in 10. Today would be his 10th, um, which is an incredible record. We've gone from 19th to 5th in a space of a short time. Wow. Um, it's a, it's a mixed bag, really. I think. I don't know what you guys think, but I think when we pre-season, I kind of expected the table to start with because the, our team last season was shocking. Um, I think if we're going to go up, we need to strengthen more. Uh, and we need to be max D. Um, if if Pete Winkleman lets me go, then I, I think it will fall apart. Yeah. I think for me, you know, it's been a mixed bag, like you say. We, we started the season well and it fell away, and I think part of that was down to appointed a lot of manager Graham Alexander. Yeah. Again, a good manager, but the style of play at MK is very different to what you see Alexander's team set up and do. So, you know, again, it, it kind of it lost its way. The players didn't really seem to buy into it, and it felt like they'd lost the dressing room by the time he left. Um, you know, but we've got great ability there. You look at Lecco, look at Isaac, look at Max Dean, that's been mentioned. You know, there's some really good quality there. Um, and I think what, you know, Mike Williams has come in from Gateshead. You see he's pulled up trees doing what he's done there. He really reminds me of, a, I suppose, a Liam Manning or a Russell Martin type, of, very much a technical manager, very much about the style of play and, and sort of what we call the MK way, sort of that passing on the deck and percentages, if you like. And I think he really resonates with that sort of player that we've got at the club and, and really managed to reconnect them to, to that sort of mentality and really bring back exciting football, you know, possession-based football, which is something we're used to. And unfortunately, under Alexander, for, for whatever reasons, and no disrespect to the guy, but, you know, it's... Hit and, hit and hope football really if you like and I think Bradford have got more of a physical team that's set up for that style of play so you know I wish him the best in, in what he's doing now but I just feel like it's a poor appointment in the summer that's really cost us and, and ended up where we are now but 
fair play to Mike and you know we've been on a fantastic run we're back in the playoffs so long way that continue. I do think even though it's a poor appointment it has turned out quite good in fact we've got Mike now I don't think we would have got him in the summer so I think even though we did appoint Graham I think it is kind of tended to positive that we've got Mike now. Yeah. The only two things I'd say were positive about Graham is the fact that he brought Joe Thomas and Jack Hayes to the club for their good time. I'd probably argue that against, well, again, Liam Sweet is our director of football, so again, he's got a lot of influence over that. I don't really think Graham had much say on that, yeah, from what I understand. So, again, not a critique of the guy, um, but again, if we look back to the end of last season, really we should have stayed up, we should have done more. I felt we should have stayed with Liam Manning, stuck by the guy after what he'd achieved the seasons before. Um, that said, Mark Jackson, I felt, got a rough deal at the end of the season. You know, again, he was let go. I'd have probably given him the first 10 games to prove himself and you know again it's just one of those things but as the guys have said things have panned out the way they have and if they hadn't have done maybe we wouldn't have Mike now so I think, I think Manning was hard done by getting Derek Martin and Darling it was always going to be a tough last to do a pace of lots of 20 goals 10 assists or whatever um, what was it uh, Twine did um, but you know we had plenty of opportunity for Arnsley, Springs and Vines, Marty at home, we should have saw that one out and we would have stayed up, but you know, when, when they scored and it was 4-2, I just, we both said it, but that's, we're going to bolt it now. We yep. did, and here we are, but more grounds to come and see, new grounds. Always a positive. Again, so <laughs> yeah, and, and nice to be back at Donny as well, I say, one of the clubs I've always had a soft spot for. And I think, again, looking at your team, looking at McCann coming in, for six months he's been in now, so he's not really had a chance to do too much, but from what I've seen, I've been impressed. And I think give him time, you know, again, he'll, he'll do what he needs to do to get you back up and down. Definitely. I think it's one of them. I think a lot of fans kind of want that quick fix, whereas it's not going to be a quick fix for how bad we've been the last few years. Um, just finally from me, then. Um, a bit of thoughts on today's game and can I get a prediction from you? Well, we've never won. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, today, if we win, we'll be a first. Mm. I, I, I'd be happy with a draw, but I think we're going to score a 90th minute winner. And you'll see this guy. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? No, seriously, I think, as you say, Doncaster has historically been our hoodie team. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I think looking back at the home game we had this season with you, I think it really Doncaster are unlucky. It's two mistakes it really cost you yeah. on that one. I was impressed with the style of play and, and what was happening, you know, from your side. So, I think again it'll be a tough contest. I think it'll be a goal that decides it either way. I think it'll be a tight game, but I, the way we're playing at the moment, I would hope a two-one win to Dons. But yeah. so I'm not overly confident on that. What do you yeah. think, last Stadium? Oh, it's a lovely one. It's a shame, like you say, it's a shame. It's not as full as you'd like it because if it's like I say if it were a full stadium it'd be superb I, I always love coming to stadium and came myself it's a fantastic stadium to watch football in. and padded seats as well can't ask for much more so. I just don't think we had big fans in that first place there's a mixture of things I mean so going back to the days we had a lot more hair and uh, we were in North London well South London sorry but um, yeah I think there's a, it's a mixture you've got the kids now who are sort of were born when say Milton Keynes became Milton Keynes in yeah. 2004 and they're now the ones back in the team. They're the ones coming to the ground. That's really nice to see as, a, yeah. as an older fan. Um, but again, the, you know, the, the ground was built for the, you know, for the future World briefing Cup. for the Rugby World Cup, as you say, and, the, and stuff yeah. like that. So we kind of built the facilities before we built the fan base. If that makes yeah. sense. So yeah. not many teams in the league rivals. Oh, Derby! I don't think any team will fill the stadium. Like no, and, you know, on average, we've had gates of around sort of. Historically, around eight to ten thousand, which you think for a club that's twenty years old in its current guys, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, no. You know. When it's full, though, it's yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, have, you have your big cup games, or I think even Mansfield away last time we were in the league two. Ah, yeah. That, that was, was a yeah, and twenty-five thousand people turned up. So wow. you know, the catchment's there. It's just yeah. getting the success to go with it to hopefully bring people in. Same Definitely. With the Lincoln, same with the Lincoln, and when we had yeah. back in the Sheffield United as well. Liverpool game when we smashed Man United as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, enjoy your day, enjoy your day, Evan. And, and, um, and happy new year, guys. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to uh, the MK Fellows as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I said back for some pre match thoughts. Okay, so just before kick off, it's time for my pre match thoughts. So we're going to start, as per usual, with the home team and my team, Doncaster Rovers. So we are currently in 20th place out of 24th which is fifth bottom and so far this season we've had seven wins four draws and 13 defeats our last result was 
Uh, not a bad point, to be fair. We had a one-all draw away at Mansfield on Friday night, which was a much better performance, to be fair. We'd lost three in a row before that, where we conceded 11 goals in just three games. Um, and it was a lot better performance. We looked a lot better. We set up a bit differently as well. Um, it looked a bit more like a 4-3-3, kind of. Um, or maybe a 3-5-2. I'm not too sure what we played, but we definitely weren't five and back. And um, yeah, it just looked a lot better. We seemed to go at Mansfield a lot better than we have done the last few games because the last few games we've kind of sat back a lot more and kind of invited pressure on from the teams and um, like I say against your quality teams they can punish you and that is what has happened in the last few games but to be fair we had a I thought it was a very soft goal ruled out but I also thought Mansfield should have had a still war penalty so that kind of evens it out a bit there so yeah we played we played well this is a team that's only lost one game all season and I said we'd lose 3-0, I thought we were going to get battered, but me and a lot of other people were proven wrong, which I'm not complaining about at all. So, um, yeah, that still leaves us in 20th, but it does stop the run of losses in a row. So, hopefully now, because uh, like I say, we looked a lot more confident in that performance, so hopefully we can take that into today's game. And as for today's visitors, MK Dons, they are doing a bit better than us at the minute. It's fair to say they're currently in 6th place, out of 24 teams, which is one of the playoff spots. So, so far this season, we've had 11 wins, 6 draws and 6 defeats. And the last result was a 2-0 home victory against Crawley Town. So, they've now won 4 in a row in the league. And they've conceded 1 goal in them 4 matches. And they're also unbeaten in the last 9 games, uh, which they've won 7 of. So, um, MK Dons, they've never actually won at the Eco Power Stadium before. So it's been a bit of a bogey ground for him. So personally for me, I'm hoping we can take that into um, into this match, but we'll have to wait and see. So in the previous meetings between these teams, uh, we played at MK Dons back in August, where we lost by two goals to one. Um, to be fair, the two goals we conceded were both sloppy mistakes, which could have easily been avoided. Um, but other than that, it was a pretty close game. Second half, we started playing really well and we were unlucky not to get anything out of it. But nevertheless, it was Milton Keynes who took all three points that time. So that brings me on to my prediction for today's event. So do I think MK Dons are going to do the double over us or are we going to beat their nine, break their nine game on a beaten streak? My prediction is... It might be wishful thinking, but I think we're going to share the spoils here today. I think... That Mansfield game is going to put some more confidence back into us, but we are playing a very inform MK Don side. We do have a good record against them at home, but like I say, when they're doing as well as we are, we've been doing as bad as we are. You know, you won't think that would look lightly. However, it does seem to happen against MK Don's, but I think we're going to share the points here. I'm going to go Doncaster Rovers 1, MK Don's 1. Anyway, that is it for my pre-match thoughts. Let's head on back to the EK Power Stadium and see how the match goes. There are the teams in. MK Don fans over there. Come on, Rovers. Go on! Go on! Yes! Get in there! Come on! Let's go! Come on! New Year, new Rovers! <laughs> One note of Rovers, is it a new year, new Rovers? I mean, probably not, but <laughs> eight minutes in, uh, one nil up, and um, yeah, we've done all right so far. Neither team's really created much before that, it's been quite back and forth. Won a lot of second balls, um, which is a good sign to be fair. Um, but like I said, so long way to go, we'll see how the rest of the game uh, goes. So, so far, Rovers won, and Pedro's nil. Great ball, right, go on. Oh! Oh no! 
for deflection. Go on. Oh. Go on again. Oh! Yes! Yes! Come on! What a deflection! What a deflection! Come on! Oh no! Wow, what is actually going on here? It's 2 0 after 15 minutes, absolutely crazy. Um, to be fair, I don't think Einside knew anything about that. It's kind of had a shot right into his place off Einside, and it's gone in, and we're looking to break again here. It could easily be free. Go on then! Oh! Yeah, man! <laughs> Celebration music just gone off. Um, yeah, really good. We're actually pressing. We actually look, you know, like we want to. We're actually pressing him and, and forcing the attack. We're hitting him break instead of. Having to worry about us getting it on the break, so good stuff so far. 2-0, two for two Go on! Oh, great save to be fair. Great save. We're on fire today. Shit. Oh! Got away with that. About six minutes to go in this half, still 2-0 to the Rovers. MK knows will come back into it a bit more in the last 10 minutes or so, but we've held stronger so far and we're looking good going forward to the fair. I mean, it's looks like how Grant McCann should be playing. I mean, against Notts County and Morecambe and Bradford, we kind of sat back and invited pressure, whereas today we're actually going at it more and playing, like I say, how Grant says he'll play. If they score three, we'll score four. So, yeah, anyway, try me, uh, not try me, sorry. Um, MK Nell's got a free kick on the edge of the box, so we're going back to this. Still 2-0 to the Rovers. Go on. Oh! Oh, one, finish! Yes! Oh no! Oh, oh I thought it went in. Oh no! No! Oh no! We look like mugs now, don't we? Go on! Go on! Yes! It's free! It's free! Get in! All the inside to set these slots. What is going on here? Not complaining. What is going on here? Three and Alton Rovers just before half time. Tommy Rowe will be at a near post might look on it. And we just hope it's a fair, but these will be more as well. Um, so MK have had a pressure on the last 10 minutes or so, but we've been all over them. We've been playing how we should be playing. And um, it's paying off. This is what we need to do if we're going to play this style of football. We need to go for it. And so far it's working out. So three and Alton Rovers. Probably the last action on the half. Oh, 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 it is so weird. It just seems like a completely different team. And um, honestly, that was such a superb first half of football. We were absolutely superb. It, it just That's how a Grant McCann team should play, in my opinion. Um, it feels like the last few games we've kind of sat back and invited the pressure and we played very negative and defensively and then just tried to, you know, tried to not concede and then maybe hit one break. But... Today we just look we just look superb. We pressed them so much. I mean, we weren't sitting back at all. We we're just going for them from you know from the first whistle. We just we we're just relentless. We just went at them. Uh, didn't let them have any time on the ball. And then just played everything forwards. It's you know no negativity whatsoever. And honestly, every single player this first half has been absolutely superb. And like I said, that's how we should play. Um, and it's so refreshing to see that. It, it seems weird just because of how bad we've been at the at the minute, um, to see that type of performance, it's it's kind of like, where's this come from? It's, I'm shocked if anything, um, it's, you know, it's it's amazing to see and really hope this can continue because like I say, MK Dons are a good side, we've not lost in nine games and um, we're absolutely playing them off the park and to be fair, they don't look a bad team in my opinion, I think we're just playing really well but, you know, we did, we did have a spell where we came back into the game before we got our third but other than that, we've been pretty comfy to be fair and, um, so let's hope this continues. So with that said, let's get back to the eco power and see how the second half went. Ah, uh, look here. Come on. There we go, one sub made. No foul going off, Queer coming on. Been a pretty 
quiet second half spend, not a lot got off, but um, we've kind of sat back there trying to push forward, but to no luck as of yet. Still 3 0. Oh, 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 good save. What a save, James. Well done. Two change for Rovers, then Tommy Rowe coming off for Kyle Hurst. Rowe's been superb today, to be fair, he's put a real shift in. Been really good to see. And the second change is. Too sure it is, I think it's Ball New. Yeah, Ball New coming off. And Nixon coming on. Been good so far, like I say, not a lot happening, but keeping it nice and steady, letting them have the ball and we're just sitting back and soaking up all their pressure. So, still 3 0 as it stands. <laughs> About four minutes ago, it's been a pretty quiet second half, a very few chances to be fair. We, like I said, have got a lead to protect, so we've just sat back and let them have the ball and we've not really done a lot with it to be fair. Um, other than that, that's about all that's happened to be fair, so still 3 0, nearly full time. Final two changes for the Rovers then. Um, Brown coming on for Biggins, one of the young ones, good to see him get some game time. And the second one, Einstein coming off. Jack Goodman coming on. Not long to go now, getting sand donation from the crowd. The crowd so prepared for that second goal. Yeah, there's only a couple of minutes left now, so let's see how the rest of the game goes. <laughs> Six minutes of added time at the end of this game. Away! Hey! Get in! Full time! 3 0 to the Rovers. Girls come together when. Since we've seen this. Full time it's finished Doncaster Rovers 3 MK Dons nil and it's been a pretty quiet second half affair not a lot of chances either way it's uh, we've kind of just shut up shop and um you know just they've had most of the ball we've just kind of sat back and um did what we need to do and see out the game with a clean sheet which is really good because we have been struggling for clean sheets as of lately um so Really, really good to see that from us. But yeah, as I was saying, pretty similar to what I said at half time to be fair. I don't really need to repeat that, but we've just been absolutely superb. We um we got the job done in the second half. First half we did all the work, and then like I say, second half could just sit back and um yeah, let them have the ball, let them try and come and attack us, and we defended superbly to be fair. I think Olu. Um I know he's linked with a move to Wigan um this month, but trust me, he's um if you know, if that was one of his last games, he's been absolutely superb today. Like he was best player on the pitch for me. Uh, Rowe got man at match. I thought he had an absolute storming game as well. And there's not really anyone I can fault. Really, everyone would man for man were just absolutely superb. And everyone you could tell put 110 percent effort in. Because um, like I say, we're winning all the second balls. We just get like when they were having chances, we were blocking everything. You know, putting bodies on the line and yeah. Cannot fault anyone today. Superb. And hopefully, like I say, New Year, new Rovers. Who knows? Uh, hopefully, uh, we could, like I say, we started um, last 2023 off with a win as well. And that weren't the best of years. But hopefully, this year will be a bit better. Hopefully, we can start off with a bang, you know, in 2024 and carry that on through the weeks. We've got a tough game coming up um, at the weekend. We've got Harrogate Town away, who are in pretty good form. I've not really checked the results, to be fair, but uh, they were winning last I saw, so that's probably the case. They are, like I said, they're on a really good run at the minute, so we know that's not going to be an easy game. So, um, 
yeah, let's see how we do. Let's hopefully take this form into the next few weeks. But as for today, I'm going to leave the video here. So thank you very much for watching. MK Dons fans, if you want to stick around, make sure you do like and subscribe. Plenty more Rovers content and neutral games coming as well from the EFL and non-league. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Thank you to the MK fellas for coming on the channel and I'll be on their channel. So I'll link their channel in the description. Go over and give them a subscribe. Great bunch of lads doing some great stuff for MK Dons. Um, so the next video on the channel will more than likely be on Saturday with Harriet Town versus Doncaster Rovers. But if that changes, make sure you follow me on Twitter just to keep up to date with any updates. And I'll let you know on there. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.